Interesting. Hmm. It's weird. Sorry. Hello. Hello, hello. How are <laughs> you? I'm great. How are you today? Doing good, doing good. <laughs> so, like I said before, we're just going to go ahead and go over your character and see what kind of lore we can create. You can also either choose to write yourself or over the course of discussing what you, what kind of lore you're hoping to get out of your character or make for your character, I could also write it for you or attempt to, I should say. <laughs> Nothing too formal. Um, yeah. Mostly the recording thing I asked that was kind of so I could look over my own work, see if there's a better, if I can do things a better way. This is kind of like an informal teaching session, more or less. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No problem. And I just kind of turned on the VTuber stuff just because I thought it would be fun to do so uh, in form. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, Christian, go ahead and tell me about your character to start off. Um, I noticed that they appear to be a wood elf chef of some kind. Uh, well, yeah, I'm a wood, wood elf, but I, I call it a jungle elf because I, I live near a jungle. You know? oh, I see, a jungle elf. A jungle elf. Uh, and I, I, I mean, that's basically, I, I like to cook, but I personally, I, I like to take care of my, of my tools of work, my knives. And I, I wanted to grab that and like, just maybe like a, a dark backstory or something. Uh, by dark backstory, what do you mean by that exactly? I don't know, the, it's... He's really good with uh, with knives, but like not cooking good. Oh, like not, uh, not, not good as a chef. He's good as a chef, but he's better using them. So, you know? is that like his, is being a chef like what he moonlights as, while being um, something else that requires the use of knives in a presumably uh, most violent manner? Is like their real job? Or tell me about that. Uh well, I was thinking maybe like a a long a, a long like a like an old warrior or something, and the and the cook cooking is like the the re redemption. They did stuff that they are not proud of. Oh, I see. So, I guess old in uh, human years as opposed to elven years, or. Yeah, all, all in human years. I, I see. Mean, my, my character is, should be 220, 24 years old. Then it's young for a elf, but <laughs> not young as, for an as elf. young. Yeah, 200 is youngish for an elf. I see, I see. Um, so, our curiosity and... Partly out of curiosity and also just to get an idea of how you got the inspiration for your character. Um, are you a chef in the real world, in meat space world, in the real world? I'm a, a gastronomy student, so kind of, yeah. I see. Was that the direct inspiration for your elf character, or did you just uh, feel well, like... Not, not that direct for the elf, but for the idea of the character, yes. Totally. So, the, like, totally, or the 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 chef identity? Yes, because I I I I'm a chef. Well, I'm a cooking uh, a gastronomy student. So. Oh, I see. That's cool. You're actually the second, maybe third, uh, cook or VTuber that I've met who is a cook in the real world. Surprisingly. Interesting. Mm-hmm. The other one, of course, is in fact, in fact, the other person I know who is also a chef in the real world also has a cooking VTuber, which is kind of an interesting coincidence. So, oh, cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, um, you mentioned that there's sort of an old warrior type person. Um, 
uh, relatively old by human standards, but they're, are they young by their specific racist standards or middle age? Or? Yeah, yeah, they are young for the for an elf because usually elves live thousands and thousands of years. I see. Um, and also, is this what kind of society are we looking at here? Uh, is being a warrior type person very common in this part in, in, in Chris Christian's uh? society or is it a very specialized field or well i feel it's actually quite common because the jo the jungle is it's quite harsh but the the idea of, of the character is then he didn't like like it for how to say it he did not enjoy being a this kind of person, or he didn't like how much his life was based on that because he he lived for for he used to live to just kill for the tribe. And was he? Tribe. I see. So he used to pretty much. This was. Kind of his uh, what's that word I'm looking for? This is his, this was his pre original um. It's a Latin word, a Latin phrase. Um, it's not Latin. What the hell am I thinking? It's a French phrase. Uh, rise. I I'm going to completely destroy this because I can't speak French to save my life. Uh, raison d'être, or reason to live, basically reason for. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, th that could be it. Th 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 I'm I'm really bad creating my own stories. That's fine. Um, Sorry. Uh, basically, throughout the process, I'm going this interview I'm having with you and your character right now is meant both to get an idea of what you've already created and also to hopefully build a scaffolding upon which you can naturally and organically create your own ideas uh, for your character, which is part of what this uh whole session is about not necessarily just me writing or you writing everything but basically to create the lore period <laughs> oh yeah um so don't feel like flustered or anything it's okay to not know at this time hopefully over the course of us uh working together over the course of weeks or however long it takes really uh we'll be able to get a better idea of who christian the vtuber well not christian the vtuber well yeah christian the vtuber is yeah. Um, and hopefully that you'll be able to integrate that more into your content if you so wish, or it could just be a fun thing to say that, oh, I have a cool OC <laughs> sort of deal, whatever you like, really. Um, so back to what we were discussing. Um, so basically to go over, uh, so far we have that you kind of have the, as far as tropes go, you kind of have the, uh, you basically have Kenshin Himura from Uroni Kenshin. You got the whole, um, that you're previously a kind of warrior-ish, kind of... I don't want to, I don't want to, like, say any very specific words that you haven't already said, uh, just so I don't accidentally influence your thought process. Like, um, for example, you mentioned knives. Well, when people say knives and dark brooding backstory and a warrior type thing, there's a certain kind of... There's a certain kind of trope or cliche that people immediately start thinking of, and it doesn't need to necessarily be like that. Um, for example, uh, there's a character in Ark Knights named Gravel, who is supposed to be a knight, but they use daggers. So you think that they're actually more of a roguish character, and they are, but that's not really what they are in the lore. It's not the same thing. They just It's just a stereotype that people get from the certain weapons that they use because the way most media today is structured we're kind of um, predisposed to thinking that oh just because someone uses knives they must be an assassin kind of person when that's not necessarily the case um but that's also why i'm trying to build up would you like trying to pull out uh the idea an idea of who or what this character is so i'm um, back onto what we were just discussing, um, like, 
I mentioned I asked if this uh, was a kind of uh, job class, a kind of occupation that's common in this particular society. You say that it is, which lends me to be curious about what why did they start to resent their job? Was there was was there someone that made that changed that uh, changed their perspective on things? Did they just genuinely find it distasteful and felt like they were pressured into doing it because that's how their culture is structured? Um, like that sort of thing, nature versus nurture, that good, that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, I think. Well, I would say that they actually like live live there. They they work there. They was their life, and somebody showed them another way, maybe a target. Somebody then was bad for the for the. How to say it? For for the tribe? Uh, like he was, bad he, for he the society? Not, bad for the government? Or? Uh, bad for the for, for the, the tribe. They, 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 well, it was a target they, they was given by, by the tribe. But that target make, made him uh, realize, oh wait, why why we're doing this? Hmm, I see. Um, and why would this particular target be any different from any other target they have had before? Mm, that's that's what I don't I don't know. Hmm. All right, let's hold on to that train of thought then, and let's go in a slightly different direction. Uh, this is gonna sound very. This is gonna sound like something out of a stupid sitcom or something. But uh, tell me about their parents. <laughs> Hmm. And there is a reason why actual therapists, believe it or not, and such what what not actually do ask about people's family, because yeah. Well, yeah, I believe. But, but hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean. We like we can go for the trope of the classic. Oh yeah, the mom was a uh, normal elf elf wife, and the father was another warrior, and that's that's what what it it that's why the they were a part of the same like a warrior class on on the on the society, and that's why he was a warrior himself. I see. I see. So, following in the family footsteps of the father was also a warrior, so they too will be a warrior, huh? Now, were they doing this of their own free will, or were they um, pushed into doing it by their father or family, or is it required by the government, like some some sort of conscription, or...? I may have an idea about that. Oh, really? Do tell. No, uh, of about the father, well, the 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 the, the parents. Okay. Because the the parents are well, the mother was a really good cook. Ooh. <laughs> he always he always wanted to learn that, but uh, his father, being then my my uh, character was an only child. He was like, no, you need to fight. Don't no time for cooking. Very interesting. So, uh, classic, actually, uh, as Quite someone who is, a, as someone who screw, or as someone who is of Asian descent, I unfortunately am all too familiar with this concept. Um, so he kind of, he kind of uh had more in common at least um, interest-wise with his mother than his father, but his father wanted to uh, convince him to basically, to our, felt that he should instead focus more on, should be, uh, should go into the field like he did himself. Okay. Yeah. Now, did this lead to any conflict within the family? Like, 
was how did the did, the, did his um, it's clear from the way he described it that his father was well aware of the father was cl quite aware of his son's desires and clearly found them distasteful or at the very least disapproved of them uh, how did the mother feel about this well i think that the mother classically was like don't don't be harsh with the kid but uh, but kid don't don't make angry don't make your dad angry i see so kind of milk toast then um it's more of like um very traditional uh sort of thing so does this lead me to believe that Christian, young Christian did not learn cooking from his mother? Or did he just happen, um, or did she teach him in secret, or did basically... Um... She, she did teach him, but, but when he wasn't fighting, you know? I see. Okay, so it's not like a case of dad was physically preventing him from doing cooking. It was just more of a matter of he could not do this as a profession as opposed to he could not do it at all sort of thing. Yeah. He he, he couldn't like put it in the in the fierce like in, in fierce way instead of fighting. I see. I see. And okay, another idea. Did did that as a kinda accepted the idea of he learns to cook. That's why he learns to cook. But he needed to train the double, double the heart. Ah, that's very interesting, actually. So, the father did not mind so much that his son was interested in cooking, but he wanted him to. But he had to make up for it by training harder as a warrior. Okay, that's actually yeah. kind of unique. Um, usually in stories like this, uh, it's a very a uh, hard. It's a very it's not new usually it's not as nuanced um usually it's one side of the family is super anti what their child wants and they're like violently anti such and such but this is different this makes a lot more yeah. sense actually this also yep, leads yep. me up oh, sorry go on no yeah yeah i was i was agree oh i was just going to say that this leads me to believe or to assume that it, his relations with his family was not really strained or at least not as strange as, strained as it could have been is that correct yeah it it wasn't as bad but it it was like yeah it's okay it's not like the ideal family but of course it it, it wasn't uh screams and stuff Okay, so it wasn't basically... Alright, that makes a lot abusive, of sense. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't abusive. That's a good way to put it, actually. Alright. Hmm. This is actually all very good. So as you can already see, you already are creating organically a lot of more backstory for your character. I'm not sure how much of this you thought of before today's tonight's session, but this is good. This is progress. Yeah. Uh, so naturally, now that we've pretty much gone into his family life, discovered, determined that his family, while not super supportive of his interests and hobbies, were not uh, necessarily against them at all, to the point where he, they even taught him how to do both, which is very interesting. So that leads me to wonder ooh, what happened? Yeah, what happened? I mean, you could go anywhere with this. It, I mean, I mentioned earlier that I made an assumption earlier in today in the, in the conversation where I thought that he's already been through so many secret raids and Al-Qaeda, over 300 confirmed kills. <laughs> <laughs> um, prior to this one person that he decided that he doesn't want to kill. Um, this is not a uncommon trope in media. However, there is a very common criticism of this trope in media that people have. And that's the whole, how is it that you go through all of this becoming super desensitized and you just so happen to decide, no, not this one. Because 
unfortunately, this is a case where fiction does not emulate reality. In reality, people who do this for a living get very desensitized, and unfortunately, this means that it's un very unlikely that they would just happen to decide, no, I'm not going to kill this particular person for whatever reason, unless there is a very good reason for do for not doing so. And um, the most common pe one that people say is that, oh, it's a child, or oh, it's a loved one. But even then, it's it's very difficult when you yeah. when you desensitize yourself to violence. Um, most of the time, you're not going to even think about it because people quickly learn that the qu first thing you learn when you become a killer. I'm not, I don't do this. I'm not this occupation in real life. Uh, um, the first thing you learn when you become a soldier what? or work for a PMC is to not think of your target as human. You have to you reduce them into an object, an object that you will not mind eliminating. That's why it's very difficult. So, um, I made some assumptions that Christian has gone through many of these already, but I could be wrong. Did he go through many of these already, or was this his first target, or was it, or was we, was he doing this thing for only a relatively short time before he decided to stop? No, he he became quite quite a good warrior. That's where the ability with his well, with the knife went. Well, okay. Appear, most likely. Okay, so he's done this for a while, and he was very good at it up until up until the the event. But yeah, how do we justify the event? Hmm. Well, it's not necessarily just justifying. Um, there's a lot of things even in real life that aren't necessarily justified. Uh, but then again, the concept of justification is pure opinion, purely subjective. Instead, let's look more towards. I mean, even the concept of like cause and effect is kind of fucky wucky. There are a lot of things that you can't really trace how or why they occur. They just sort of do, and sometimes it's really a matter of random chance. Uh, I don't personally completely believe in the butterfly effect. I think the butterfly effect sometimes is really. Sp is really subject to chaos theory to just shit that you really can't predict thermodynamic miracles and the like so no need to lock ourselves under a concept and under the uh, illusion of control or illusion of oh what in his background could possibly have led to this one moment um you're really open to deciding whatever it could have been it could have been a passing thought process it could have been that he was having a bad day and decided he was tired of this shit it could have been the auspices were not right, or maybe someone had intervened without realizing they were intervening. It could be anything, really. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's for, nice. for example, um, uh, I'll give, I'll use the American, I'll use the, um, I'll use some a couple of real world governments as examples. The FBI here in the states, Federal Bureau of Investigations, is actually a, is actually more of a policing branch. They don't carry out assassinations and the like. They're more they're more so concerned with um, basically national security. But they get confused a lot for the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, whose job is, which is not a government organization, which sounds weird, right? Even though we have elected officials for that. It's actually a civilian organization, but part of what they do does involve um, uh, troubleshooting nas or international uh, situations which have national interest, which have interest to the American government. Um, and the reason I bring this up, bring this up is to also bring up the Russian equivalent, the FSB, the uh, which people, which is also kind of equivalent to American FBI, except the FSB also kind of uh, functions as a secret police, and they also have a duty of some kind, even if they don't typically talk about said duty, um, to silence or to deal with uh, threats to national security. And how this applies, I'm basically asking uh, what kind of targets 
or what kind of specific organization or or what uh, duties Christian may have had. Um, was he a troubleshooter? Was he or was he like a frontline soldier type person that was like stationed on the borders or and basic or and to jump off that, uh, what kind of enemies, what kind of targets did he typically, was he typically presented with? Were they fellow jungle elves? Were they other races? Were they, maybe they weren't even humanoid. Maybe they were just primitive monsters or maybe they were just mindless monsters. So um, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, hmm. I... Let's uh, how how do we well, not, again not justify what you just said, but like like ma make it work. Mm. Well, hmm. what was this? What kind of uh, warrior was his father? Well, was. I I guess the the father was an, a normal warrior like a like a front line. And so uh, basically, a soldier kind of per, soldier kind of person. Uh, yes. Secure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Did Christian have anything like approaching like ranks or whatever, like officership or the equivalent? Or was his were his family nobles in this society, or were they just uh, normal, quote unquote, normal people? In this is in this society, I can't speak. The beer is getting to my head. Uh, in this, were they kind of like the equivalent of just a uh, a normal family in this society, or nobleish, or rich, well, poor, I, middle class? I I think they 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 were normal. Yeah. Not hmm. much like happening with them. They were just they had a work to do. Okay. Either way. Interesting. What other races exist in this uh, fantasy world? Well, humans, of course. Okay, humans. Uh, sorry, you I mean, first. I, I think we can go with a classic one. To be completely honest, mm, that's fine. Human, a human elves, etc., etc., etc. So, were there dwarves too? Gnomes, orcs, goblins, kobolds? <laughs> okay, I'm going a little. Kobolds are probably a little bit too. Are probably a little bit more detailed than that, but. to think like uh... yeah well we can actually do do the like using the, the other type of monsters like they they were like protecting the, the village so they were protecting a village from monsters then yeah they were uh, yeah okay they were protecting the village from monster, and he was just just one of one of them. So one he of was... the protectors of the village, classic. Then the the elves they just don't like people being. So they were a monster hunter. Yeah, basically. Hmm. All right, so they're a monster hunter. Hmm. Curious. Hmm. You know, another way to think hmm. of this, it doesn't necessarily need to be that they were they got tired of killing specifically because of a target that they didn't want to kill. It could even just be that they're tired of violence in 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 all and all all in like in general, or 
maybe they've seen too many of their uh, comrades pass away or the stress was getting to them and they decided to stop entirely? Yeah, that could be it. Mm. All I'm think thinking if that type of well, if that type of trauma like affected him, uh, why he will be keep keep doing the well, keep keep uh, trying to do the all the work with knives, all that. He, he will just try to run away from that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's just what I think. Also, I was thinking, uh, since we're changing a little bit where he's more of a monster hunter type character, uh, are these monsters edible? Okay, man, I see where you're going. I'm going kind of a dungeon meshy route, right? Or a Tarika yeah, route? I, or... I was going to get it instead of dungeon meshy. There's, believe it or not, um, as someone who reads too many books or too many mangas about cooking and eating foods and even fictional foods, there's actually quite a few that are about cooking and eating uh, fantasy monsters, believe it or not. There's even a game called... Uh, there's even a, a game... Oh, I can't remember the name of the game now. Where it's a side-scrolling game. You literally go out... You're a chef... You literally go out into the woods, you kill monsters, you harvest their bodies, uh, you harvest their uh, bodies for food stuff, and then you go back to the home base and you literally cook using the ingredients that you just harvested. Uh, Battle Chef Brigade or something? So, similar concept. In the manga Toriko, there is a there are two concepts, Bishokia and... Um, whatever the fuck the other name is. Basically, chefs um, team up with monster hunters, and those monster hunters go out and collect ingredients, which they then bring back to the chef, who then turns them into delicious food. And Dungeon Meshi, of course, is about um, that one dwarf, whose name I forgot, literally cooking and eating, uh, not just the dwarf, but also the knight character, whose name I forgot, uh, cooking the monsters that live in a dungeon because it turns out they're edible if cooked pro prepared properly. But um, if we go that route, uh, one has to wonder once again: Did Christian? Why did Christian decide to stop doing the hunting portion? Did he become a vegetarian or something, or did he just get tired of hunting for sport or hunting for to defend the village? But even then. Um, I guess this also, this is important because it completely changes the, uh, can changes yeah, yeah. the, uh, not just the idea, but it changes the, I guess the, it starts, it completely changes things like the, uh, any potential character flaws, um, uh, any potential character struggles, because it's different to, if they're just monsters, unless he, unless the monsters turn out to not actually be monsters or not as monstrous or they are suffering from PTSD or something from, and have decided that they can no longer do this as part of their job or many other reasons, honestly, it's a far cry from used to be an assassin or a soldier and you were given a target that you did not want to take out. Uh, the kind of stress, the kind of... The kind of... Um, what's the term? It's just different, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was... I, I just, like, uh, thought about, like, maybe got with the... Like a tra the tra tra strategy approach, and that's why he was forced to go out. The what approach? Uh, tra strategy. Tragic or tragic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to create? You want to? You're looking to create a more tragic character, basically, or well, maybe not tragic character, but you mean you. 
want them or rather you believe that Christian has had a more tragic um, backstory, basically. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I'm thinking about like the something that forced him to go out of the village to abandon his his duties per se. Okay, this is different. All right, so he flat out like leaves the village entirely. I mean, he does leave, but may, but with a purpose. That, that, that's what I'm thinking. He he leaves with a purpose. Okay. Well, I mean, most people leave their family home for a legitimate person purpose or one reason or another. Um, very few people leave just for the sake of it, like, unless they're suffering from wanderlust. Um, so there was a reason that he. So when he quit, it was not specifically because of the job. It's because he wanted to leave the village entirely for some reason. Yeah, he he wanted to leave because that something happened, and he needs to go out and fix that. Oh, I see. Maybe chase somebody. Interesting. Is the village still around? Mm, I mean, he needs to. Mm -hmm. He needs to come to come back to finish the mission. So. So he was he did he choose to leave or was he sent out by some other entity? No, he did choose to leave. But like they they gave it a mission, you know. Okay, he chose to leave, and they gave him a mission to leave for reasons. Yeah, he 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 leave for a for a for a mission for a mission. Well, that maybe the last like last mission to complete something to prevent something happen. Maybe somebody steal something from the village. But that will be like hmm. another headache to create. Mm. Okay. So he's a monster hunter, however. So he's a monster hunter with a predilection with a uh, predilection towards cooking, but because his father was a soldier. He was convinced into becoming a soldier himself as part of a do as kind of his duty, and mm -hmm. he mostly became a soldier so he could help defend the village from vicious monsters. But then something occurred in his backstory where someone was that was that someone an outsider or were they also part of the village? Mm. Well, I think an an outsider, cause going by elf elf lore, uh, elf well lore or costume, you usually don't go out. Okay. Either, either or either you need a really good reason to leave the the village, or something happened. I see. And, and and they need to, to fix that for to protect the village. I see. Alright, so some outsider went to the village, stole something important, and then left the village, and he needs to go out and get them and the item back or just the item back? Do they care about the status of the person that's the thief, or? I mean, well, can you can you repeat that? Oh, um, basically, so we're the we're basically uh talking about how someone stole something from their village, and he has going on he has gone on a mission to reclaim this item. Um, is dealing with the thief himself also part of this mission, or is he chiefly concerned with getting his item back? 
No, he, he needs to to get the item back. I see. Okay. So the person who stole it is not as important as getting the item back. This is actually very important for a few reasons. First off, if they don't care about the particular perpetrator of the stolen item, it gives it means that the item itself must be extremely valuable to the village for some reason. It also implies that this person, this outsider, really has no connection to the village itself. It's not like a former person that has a grudge, it's not it's not a particular person that they hate. It doesn't it's probably not someone that has a particular grudge against the village itself. Although it also brings up other questions like why did they steal from this village to begin with and also what is the item that was stolen? You can go in many different directions with this really. This is also part of the reason why um, in real criminal cases, they try to the detectives try to figure out what a motive was. Um, how is the suspect related to the victim and whatnot? I just got a really dumb idea. Oh, uh, there's very few dumb ideas. What's your idea? Um, the thing that was stolen for uh, of the of the village mm -hmm. was a ceremonial knife. A ceremonial knife, huh? Okay. A, a, a ceremonial knife. But this knife is, how to say, is, mm, I mean, it looks like a, like a cooking knife. It's not a cooking knife, but it looks like one. It looks like a chef's knife, huh? Aha, uh -huh. well, hear me out. Mm -hmm. This, this, uh, they are wait, ch chasing the the person that stole it, and they see the it's it's impossible to get to him or get the well get the item back. Impossible? Why is it impossible? Because it's well, it's possible for me to 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 get it out because it's a price. It's a price. Uh, it, it's a price for a for a, a, a really specific event. Oh, a really specific type of event. It's a prize for a competition of some kind. Yes. It, it, it was stolen by the organizer of the, of that event to justify how much they are like. Well, the people are that that are going in. I see. And and this this uh, uh, event, this uh, tournament, is a type of master chef iron chef. That's cool. So, it the ceremony knife is the prize of a cooking competition. It's been stolen, and Christian must go on a quest to reclaim the stolen kitchen knife. Or ceremonial yeah. knife. Kitchen knife. Whichever. Yes. <laughs> it's probably, it probably makes more sense if it was just a kitchen knife, since it's part of a cooking competition. Yeah, but it, it, everybody looks at it like a, a prize. Like, oh yeah, it's really cool. But me, being of that, uh, where it's stolen, it's a ceremonial knife. And that's why, like, it's a, like really, really specific. How to say it? Like the motivation to to go out. All right. To get to get to get better at uh, at cooking to manage to fight them. And was this stolen before, during, or after the tournament, the uh, cooking tournament? Uh, this, this was stolen for the tournament to happen. Oh, so it was stolen from the village, and it's been made a prize in a cooking tournament yes. outside the village. Yeah, yeah. That's actually really cool. See, this is why I said no, there are very few dumb ideas. This is, that's actually a very 
Because uh, that's actually a very clever idea. Um, now, it kind of interweaves a lot of things um, into the story, really. It also, I, it's also in a very clever roundabout way, uh, suddenly gives a lot more importance to the fact that your character is a chef. Because... Yeah, like... Who, who would tell them the, the, the ability of, of cooking that I refined with my mother because I like it? It was going to be used in one of the missions that make me so good with the knives. Yeah, like I can imagine the village elder or something being like, yo, so our fable, our important fabled ceremonial thingamajig has been stolen by... stolen. The only problem is we cannot go get it back without risking war with such and such nation. However, they're holding a cooking competition. <laughs> yes. And so we will send you as our representative. <laughs> exactly. See, does this sound dumb at all? No. Dude, this is, this is like, this is the stuff of manga going on right here. <laughs> this is so shonen, this is so shonen jumpish. <laughs> I love it. Big comedy. I, I love it. <laughs> It, this is why I tell people you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, discredit your ideas before you test them out or see how other people feel about them first or give them a honest look through. Um, the idea this the the obsession some people have with making a truly unique and original work is such an illusion. There is almost no such thing. Um, pretty much all stories are, in some manner, going to be a culmination and juxtaposition of various uh, human struggles. Some of whom, of some of which, some people will relate to more than others. I mean, even in this story, it's not necessarily unique, but it is unique in the way that it's been, in the way that the entire story has culminated to this point. Um, it. I will admittedly say that this is that even though I feel like I've seen a story like this before, I literally cannot remember what story that might have been. To anyone else, this would be the most unique thing in the world because, believe it or not, not everyone else, not everyone has read Toriko, Shokugeki no Soma, or Cooking Master Boy, or Dungeon Meshi, or anything like that. So to them, yeah, I mean, this sort of thing would have been completely fresh and very unique. Yeah, yeah I'm quite impressed that Dungeon Meshi is quite, like, a niche. Yeah, I didn't expect... Even though, it, even though it's quite known, it's not that, like, popular. Well, you also have to think, like, when you read Dungeon Meshi, you can tell that the person who, the mangaka who was writing it was also definitely a D&D player at some point in their life, or probably is. Yeah. Just because I didn't when I was reading that, I thought it was just gonna be a just comedic, played for laughs sort of thing, but the way it's structured, I didn't expect there to be so much plot and backstory be, and so much woven into the various humanoid factions. All their the fact that the dungeon itself is a huge major plot point and has so much lore built into it itself, and other things that are spoilers, which I will not mention, <laughs> um, but. It's also a great example from a storytelling perspective of layers upon layers of um, gradually building up a world, not by shitting all the exposition out in one moment, but by gradually introducing concepts um, as they become relevant after your audience has taken time to absorb the stuff before it. Um, so we start off with, there is a dungeon, there is a guild you have a bunch of adventurers here who previously entered the dungeon and one of them got captured by a dragon so they're going back into the dungeon to rescue that person and it just so happens that two of the characters are have chosen to, to have taken to eating monsters for food as opposed to bringing food like every other adventurer and that ends up not being like the most important thing in the story. It just happens to be the thing that 
it just happens to be a thing that happens in the story. And it's just stuff like that. Like, with what we've created so far over the past uh, 15 minutes of just talking, you have, you have a jungle elf who grew up wanting to be a chef, but neither his mom or his dad, even though his mom was also a chef, saw value in their son being a chef, so they pushed him into being a warrior instead. However, and he became a warrior to defend the town from the village from monsters. So it's not exactly, a, it's not, it's a, it's a sort of thing that is not only, that's only, um, requests, it's not only just a thing that's kind of expected of him being a man, in this, a, a male elf, but also mm -hmm. something that's necessary for the survival of the village. So, it's like his duty, right? It's kind yep. of a combination. It's a like the um, juxtaposition between duty, what you want for your life, and what you need to do with your life. Which normally is very subjective, but in this case is very real because it literally involves the survival of your community. However, here comes a, a situation, an out-of-context problem. They literally call it out-of-context. An out-of-context problem is when a situation or thing that's completely separate from the environment, the setting, swoops in and completely fucks everything up. Someone has come in, robbed a very special item and a very special item from your village, and you while your village could go to its typical way of getting it back, it's not um the best way, and they have decided that the skill that they previously thought was worthless in your character has suddenly has suddenly become possibly the most important thing to solving this crisis. It's a very it's layers upon layers basically. There's a lot of tropes, there's a lot of content um how do I say this? It's a substance really. Yeah. to your character. And just think, this was all done by you. I didn't do much. All I did was ask you a bunch of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's really quite cool. So we basically have the central plot. The central plot appears to be that your character is going um, on this quest to get this uh, ceremonial knife back. In order to do so, he near literally needs to enter a cooking competition. Um. Since we have the main plot, this stuff doesn't necessarily matter, I guess, because unless you want to create the ending of your story already, you don't need to. You can either leave it open in it like a lot of people do with their VTuber lore, or you can create an ending. Um, that's really up to you. Most people do keep their VTuber lore open in it, obviously, like... I mean, I don't know if I'll ever get get. I don't know if I'll ever get a corporeal body, and escape the clutches of the internet. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to stream anymore, right? <laughs> yeah. I think I feel I will leave it open because if I if I had to like if I completed the quest and but um how to say. It? got the knife and went back to the village but then, then that's it I went back to the village and I'm mm -hmm. dead again like I... we're in a unique position where we don't need to necessarily have complete lore as VTubers we yeah and can, especially for people that literally interweave their lore into why they're a VTuber it's probably best that they don't because they kind of need a reason to exist as VTubers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which leads was going to lead into my next question on how does VTubing fit into the bigger picture of your lore? Um, I already have an idea of how it could, but I want to hear what ideas you may have so I don't accidentally influence them. 
could uh, they don't have much idea. Uh, I was thinking that maybe when I went like out, like the classic, um, yeah, he 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 appeared in this world and he saw <laughs> all the technology and like what the hell is that? He got isekai into this world. Well, not like directly, but uh, uh, an elf village hidden in the jungle then just to go out into the modern world like huh okay this is different i see um maybe at some point while trying to learn about about the, the how or how much cooking stuff as he could he saw I don't know another VTuber that was also cooking ah. and he was like huh okay that's interesting hmm and slowly but surely like the, the idea grew on him really and that uh, that might might be the like the backstory how I, I, I went I ended up yeah. I see. I was thinking that given that this village sounds very isolated, perhaps they went to VTubing as a form to as a way to make money to continue their journey to join the competition. But the way you make it sound sounds more like he found it as a side hobby. But then one has to wonder where did he find Ooh. time to do the side hobby if he's supposed to be on this mission to join a cooking competition so that he can get back to ceremonial knife to get back to the village. I okay, I actually had okay. I don't know I, I, I told them that there was like a special like cost to enter the the tournament, but I like eh, I will not uh, gonna re remark it much. But now that you say it, then it could be like to raise funds to to help the mission because the the village doesn't have any money like like outside money. Mm -hmm. That could be the reason. Although I don't even have affiliated, so you're not even an affiliate yet. No, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Really, I'm not I thought you were. That's strange. Hmm. Yeah, I my account is quite old. Like I, I have been streaming like scarcely for six years already. Really? Shit! I didn't yeah. realize. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm old ish streamer, but I I I I'll never like. But not it's not that I didn't took it seriously, but I didn't have the hardware or the internet or the time back then to to do stuff. Mm, I, I actually see. like. Uh, started like streaming hard maybe night uh, 2019 ish hmm. then the vtuber stuff started happening and I was like eh, yeah I may do it I, mm -hmm. I was a normal web webcam streamer I and see then, you know what fuck it and I started and well then I I actually grew a lot from from where I started, I I was under fifty followers, and then I'm 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 already over two hundred now. Not much, but I mean, ah, more something. than me, I think. <laughs> Although you you grew way way faster. I guess in a shorter period of time. Yeah. But... And I think because my account is old, I don't have like the the normal bonus. Like advertising the new account path, like oh yeah, this is new. Watch it. Possibly. To be fair, I also had helped when I first started VTubing from the community that I originally came from. That oh, and okay. as much as I hate social media, I've been doing stuff like this for a while. It probably helps that the first that for the first several years after college, 
I worked in a call center, so I've kind of been used to the whole talking to people over the phone sort of thing for a while too. So that helped a little bit, I guess. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, yeah, I'm an introvert. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was studying software engineering, then then gastronomy. So imagine I'm basically a shut in that knows how to cook. Oh. <laughs> well, are you? Do you prefer cooking as opposed to being a software engineer? I like both. Oh, but, okay. I mean, cooking is there is some stuff that you you cannot get with code. You know. Hmm. Hmm. What? Oh, I was just saying. Okay, I understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 I told you. Hmm. Like, to, to, uh, you know, understand oh, what I said. No I problem. have a, some, some, some of a, of an accent. Oh, no problem. Time. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, it's up to you. You can integrate VTubing into your lore however you wish. I strongly suggest that you do just because, I mean. I, I think the, the idea of the money is, is, a, is, a, is a good way to be completely honest. All right. Say that. Uh, you, uh, I went like completely like fierce to to the battle, and then oh yeah, you need to pay the entry fee. Yeah, entry yeah. fee. Yeah, another obstacle that cannot be solved with pure violence. <laughs> yeah, it's it, like okay, yeah, yeah. How much of that uh, of this elvish elvish currency that only elf towns use? You need what's that? No, we need this. Like, like I. Uh, more money like what's that how do i get it <laughs> and so something was born <laughs> yeah you know i also just realized that this plays can or does do you play anything besides halo and chemistry well i'm playing a lot of like survival games right now i'm playing B- the vintage story minecraft awesome I there... may stream tomorrow Evil Nine because another streamer that I want to learn learn it and he's a friend of mine. That's cool. Yeah, I'm actually in Evil right now, I'm just waiting a, a friend. The reason I ask that is because even though it's not necessary, um, a lot of YouTubers do integrate what kind do uh, correlate the kind of content that they stream with the kind of YouTuber or the kind of character they are. It, the majority of the uh, VTubers I've seen who are milit- have military aesthetic almost always play strategy games and uh, FPS games. Um, almost all of the FPS, almost all of the fantasy VTubers that I know tend to play role playing games, tend to play very comfy things. All these p- pretty much very almost every VTuber I have known that. Um, is some sort of librarian, some sort of a uh, stay-at-home witch, some sort of comfy streamer, tends to do something to relate to books. Um, yeah, role play, uh, RPGs game. Yep, and like uh, a few artificial intelligence YouTubers I know of, they play, they tend to do a lot of old content, a lot of vintage stuff, a lot of um, visual novels, that sort of thing. I myself. I'm a variety streamer, but I do have a strong cyberpunk focus and also a comfy focus. That's why a lot of stuff that you probably have seen on my channel tends to be games that are not mainstream, tends to be AAA stuff, or tends to be uh, retro stuff. Doesn't necessarily need to. It doesn't necessarily need to um be like that. But I was thinking. I was just thinking. I was just kind of laughing to myself that you're a jungle elf. Who's out of their? Who's pretty much um out of their out of fish out of water environment, having because your your community is kind of isolationist, right? Um, yeah. And yet you've been sent out into a wide world to reclaim this um miss this uh ceremonial ceremonial object, but you need to also more or less learn the ways of the world to do that. So it kind of seems fitting that. Your content tends to be a combination of games that involve combat 
and also games that involve survival. These are two things that you are both good at and also need to do outside of the community. Yeah. I, I, I also, like, uh, talking about, like, doing, uh, playing games or stuff that correlate to, to the lore, mm -hmm. I actually wanted to see, an, a, like, any cooking game, but I see, I see them and they're cool, but I, I don't, like, like feel the, the the spark of streaming them. Also, they are sometimes quite expensive because they're mostly simulated. That's fair. <laughs> and th th there was one game I wanted to play, but this is it's uh, kind of VR. The it's like a, a little kitchen. Oh, kitchen simulator or cooking simulator. I think I think it is. That's a fairly fun game. I've seen quite a few people stream that so far, and it looks like you actually need to cook, cook in order to make the recipes, which was interesting. Yeah, no, yeah, that's what I said. It's quite cool, but but remember, it's quite expensive, and I, I don't think my PC can run it because yeah, VR games tend to be quite uh, heavy, unfortunately. Yeah, my my PC cannot do VR totally. <laughs> and we have a twenty the uh, ten fifty i. I see. Cooking simulator? Yeah. Oh, well, this. Oh, wait. It's a non VR version. It should. Uh, it probably has a non VR option, or maybe it was non VR to begin with, and they just happened to install to uh, add VR. Uh, uh, there is a VR version, and there is a, um, I think it just released a non VR version. I see. Ah! Mm. Content. <laughs> Indeed. It seems so wonky without VR, though. Probably. It, it's like playing VR chat without VR. Mm -hmm. You're like a statue just standing there. <laughs> or like a VR chat, you can actually play without VR, believe it or not. Obviously, it's limited since you can't use your arms and limbs like you could in VR in a, in a VR rig, but you can do it. Oh no, yeah, I, I, I have done it, but still, it's, it's really weird to look at it. Mo most of the content in VRChat is people doing stuff, like, with their arms and stuff. Maybe laying down, talking, expressing themselves mm -hmm. with, their, with their body movement, but if, you, if your body doesn't move... Also, the camera angles. I don't know how to take out the camera, so <laughs> even even less. Yeah, I may, I may check out the cooking simulator. I may just add it to the wish list. Cool. All right. Yeah, I I, I never check it checked it because I mean I, I the, all the 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 ones that I saw about it, it were like in VR like oh, wow. VR. VR. Yeah. And anything, anything more? Like um, that's all I got right now. Um, I guess my next question is, how would you like to go about the? Uh, since we pretty much have worked out what your lore is, um, in record time, I might say, in only an hour and ten, or only an hour. That's pretty good. Um, basically, how would you like to go about writing this? Would you like to write yourself with critique and assistance from me, or would you like me to write for you? It's up to you. Uh, or, I mean, you you sound like way more prepared to write write that. I mean, I actually, I I've actually uh went to school for this, so. Yeah, that, you just sound like you, you know what you're doing. I'm the only thing I have right, like n other than maybe a diary I used to have in Debian art. Uh, <laughs> I I I once write a, a children's book, and I just posted it somewhere in the internet, and I mean it was received it okay-ish, but from that I have not. Also, my ADHD doesn't help with tracking. <laughs> tracking 
I feel that. All right. In that case, what I could try to do is write a or attempt to write a short story leading up to you from when you started as a, when you when your when your character Christian started to up until um, when they realized that they need to make money to enter this um, cooking competition or something like mm -hmm. to regain their ceremonial stuff. There's just a couple more things that I'll need from you. Mm -hmm. um, unless, or unless you just want me to make it up for you. Uh, basically, things like names. Is there any specific family names or names of or any specific spe or specific uh, names that you would like for the organizations and characters? That sort of thing. Nah, you can you can make them. So I I barely have an idea of my of my own name. So yeah. Okay. Um, is your jungle elf actually named Christian, or is that a nickname, or? No, yeah, that's I, actually my name is quite similar. Just change the C, but yeah, hmm. I I do like the the name for my character. Okay. Uh, would you also accept Chris as their name, or is Christian like their uh full name, or just the name I mean, they, the name they actually go by? Yeah, Chris is like it, it, Chris can be like the name, then you you usually like present with. Oh, the name they go by then. Is the, the format, you know. Okay. And are there any other special details you would like me to include in the story aside from what we have discussed? Um. Hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what you, you uh, we could add. Hmm. Okay. Well, this is being made for you. So if you if, if at any time during the writing process you decide that there's something you would like to change or add, let me know and we'll see if we can work it in there. Obviously, there are limits of things, and I can't write this uh, write this story forever, but. No need to worry. I mean, we're also kind of I, you're like one of the first people that I befriended in the VTubing community, so it's all it's all pretty relaxed stuff. Um, yeah. Thank you also for participating in the uh, giveaway. It, I also noticed that you're friends with um that you're actually friends with uh, what's her name uh, with Jaku uh, with Yaruki. So well, I actually started knowing him from that. Oh. <laughs> huh. I wonder how Yuruki discovered that post, and I assumed that he saw it on your um, Twitter and that he followed from there. I didn't realize that it was independent of that. <laughs> yeah, I maybe somebody like shared it, and you know that uh, VTuber uh, like the ret retweet retweet just. Same uh, seems to appear somewhere because maybe a friend of a friend like it and oh yeah, why not? That's usually how it goes, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess we can do that. Um, is there anything else you would like to talk about? I didn't. I was pretty much planning on capping this at two hours, but there's no need to go all the way to the full time or what have you. If, um, and like I said, I mean, we know each other on Discord. You can DM me at any time if you need help or if you have more ideas that you'd like to include. And um, I'll probably I'll make some time to get to work on it this weekend while I still remember it. And feel free to uh, message me whenever to let me to uh, give me a reminder or to let me know or to ask how things are going. Um, yeah, I, I will ask because I'm quite interested. Okay. It's quite cool to have a lore because I tried to do a lore and I failed miserably. Uh, I wouldn't there say that you failed miserably. You literally made one over the course of an hour just now. I, oh, 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 oh. Something wrong? Oh, no. Yes. In, in my game, I was just chilling on, on, on a station and it just filled with red people. Uh oh. Run away. <laughs> Oh no, I scared. I scared yeah. them away. My ship is bigger. Oh, you're playing Eve right now. Yes. 
Awesome, awesome. I was, just, I, was, I was just chilling while talking about it. And I was, yeah, da, da, and, and a whole squad just warped in, into the station. Like, oh, fuck. Eve is the kind of game that I would definitely usually be more right in my, my alley since I'm kind of a space opera nerd. Um, the only reason I've never bothered to actually play it is because I keep hearing horror stories about how it's basically a gr it's basically another job and you need inv you need to invest so much time and effort into it and stuff and like I could barely play Final Fantasy fourteen as much as I loved F fourteen. So I'm afraid of Eve being another one of those things where I don't try hard enough and whatnot. But I don't know, maybe if enough people play it I might reconsider and at least try it out. Oh yeah, I'm. I I just play like really really casually, and I I have managed to do to get stuff, like in the long run. Really, and you're just playing casually. Yeah, casual, really casually. Although I mean, for the time I have been playing, it's probably if I if I spend like actual like time play, playing playing. It probably get, I would have way more, and I have been way too lucky. Okay. Way too lucky. Oh, uh, I do have a question for you. Um, is there a, this is the other thing that put me off? Um, do you get charge attacks by staying in the safe zone? So eventually, if you stay away from the game too long, you end up getting knocked out of the safe zones, and you get your stuff blown up, or is that not a thing? In Eve. Um. In Eve. I mean, you can get attacked anywhere, but in high sec, that is like the from one to point six of security level, you can. Uh, I mean, there is police. Yeah, no, that's the kind of point of high sec. Um, I was basically. From, from I was just point five mm -hmm. to to zero. Is a uh, low sec. There is still police, but not that much. Uh, not that much, and there is, that's usually where people are camping, engaged, waiting to kill any anything and everything, just because because you can sell the scrap for for later. Well, I meant more like when you log off in game, your ship exists and like uh, continues to exist in game, right? Uh, if you are outside, yes. Okay. So... You can dock in stations. Okay. And does docking in stations require a regular in-game fee of, like, credits for, like, tax stuff, um, or...? No. It doesn't? I, I mean, it may be in some pr private station, because as a, as a player, you can manage to build your own station. Oh. This is a really, really big fucking project, but yeah. There is a my uh, usually there is like four types of like stations that people can make. There is uh, like a, a mining, and then are like a huge uh, stations with uh, it's called refineries, mm -hmm. and they are, you usually uh, put them near. Uh, either ice planet where you can extract ores from the ice, or normal or or planets or asteroid belts and stuff. Usually, they are you can make them completely private or open to the public, mm -hmm. and you usually inside them you you have some benefits. Like in some refineries, you you can get more minerals from that, but you need to pay an extra fee from the from using the the facilities. Okay. But from NPC stations, you can like be there and anytime, anywhere. I see. The only like danger there is then for like player own bases, then they can be destroyed. Hmm. It's a huge mess to get the uh, to get. To destroy a, a station, but it can be done. Okay, that's a lot more player friendly than I thought because I used to play a 
space game, a space MMO, where you can either hide for free in your own bases that are heavily armed, but if they get destroyed, you get destroyed with it, or you can stay in a starport safe as all, but you'll get your you get charged in-game credits every so often. So eventually, um, you'll get that run out of credits, get kicked out into space, and then have your ship blown up, which usually is ex quite expensive to get to begin with. So it's one of those mm. games where, if you unless you're extremely rich, unless you play regularly, you're always in danger of like losing all your stuff, which is very stressful, as you might imagine, for an MMO. I thought Eve was like that too, but if it's not, maybe it won't be as stressful to try out after all. So I might look have to look into it. Yeah, I mean, it has seen better days, especially this this last like updates, because it it uh, we're just leaving the the age of scarcity. It was implemented by the game because uh, after the last war, then it was on December mm -hmm. of the past year, uh, there was a huge battle then. Get even uh, even huger because the it was one battle from a from a huge war. I can't remember reading about that. And for some reason, the the developers didn't like that the people has the, the capabilities to just fight with with the biggest ship of the with, game with the titans even though they mm -hmm. uh -huh, even though they destroyed them that's strange because this is not the first and i can't imagine it'll be the last major war in eve i remember the first war i remember reading about was the one again was the one of the goon squad versus bob and even up to, even at that that was only the largest war at the time there were many several similar wars before that and now, when I tried to look up that particular war, I find all these several other ones, each bigger in scope than the last, popping up one after another. So I don't know why the devs would suddenly have to suddenly care now. Uh, but... Yeah, and um, well, the goons, the goon swarm one was actually smaller, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the problem was that there was a surplus of ships. Because uh, the, industrial, the, the industrial ships the huge like uh, corporation that dedicated only to to mine and craft mm -hmm. they just were way too efficient well uh, at least way too efficient on the eyes of the developers in like oh okay they literally just produce titans daily there was no this... they, they were like, yeah we can, we have you need that okay they thought it was too that... easy <laughs> i mean after 20, 20 something years of playing you think they they actually have a, a a system in place to do that you know yeah no kidding and for some reason the 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 purpose feel then that was not fun i don't know hmm. and they increased the the price of basically any ship to craft they added new stuff needed to the troops to be in craft, and they reduced the mining on overall. So they made it... I see. They're trying to make it more difficult to produce the mega ships. Yeah, but they actually just overdid it. They, some ships are like 500% more, more expensive. 5% more? That's going to be nothing to a major corporation that has the manpower? No, 500. Oh, 500. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I used to be like a low tier industrial man. I just, I had like, I found the blueprints of shit and just like, oh yeah, let's, let's build it. Why not? I mine my small mining ship, get the resources and just build it and sell it. Mm -hmm. Well, I cannot do that now because I will, I will lose money. Because oh. I, if I remember well, I, there was one ship that cost, oh, but you can sell it around 150 something mm -hmm. in value market. But the the value of the minerals and all the it was needed is like 300 or 400, so I'm losing. So Eve is suffering uh, from hyperinflation right now. Yeah. That because... sucks. <laughs> Yeah, it is stabilizing eventually, but 
I mean, why? Why did they do they do it? Because of reasons, I'm sure. Yeah, actually, I was I was uh, doing some blueprints. Well, not blueprint fitting for some ship that I wanted to buy the boy. In the in the near future, and they were like three hundred million, something like that. Mm-hmm. I stop I stopped playing it because eh, that's a reason. And now that ship is two times the cost. Oh man! And there is uh there just there used to be a lot of them, like a lot a lot of 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 this type of ship, and now I'm just finding two. <laughs> two in the whole market. I actually want to see how much. Yeah, just before the update, it was a. a you could actually find some uh, 300. Then the update hit it, and they just skyrocket to 800, uh, 800 uh, million, and it started to go, to go down eventually. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, Chris, thank you very much for coming tonight. We, in spite of our, we actually got a lot done, and this is really good content to. I'm really excited to start writing on your YouTube lore. Um, just to let you know, it may not. It depend. It it, it depends entirely on like, um, what can be squeezed out without, seeming like I'm just padding up words or whatever. I'm. Not it's the story. I'm going to be uh, upfront with you right now. The story is probably not going to reach anywhere near five thousand words. Um, no it won't need to with the kind of what what we've discussed. Um, I imagine it might be half that. We'll have we'll have to see. I de- genuinely prefer to quality and strong writing over quantity. Um, I mostly put that 5,000 word maximum there just so that I don't end up having to write novelette length stuff for everyone because that's going to drive me insane. I can barely keep track of my... I can barely spend the time on my own works, uh, much less a friend's. But I will keep you up to date with how things are going and I'll show you parts of what's been written to, to see how you are liking the uh, direction it's taking. Um, do you have any other, and I guess the only other question I have is, do you mind if I post this uh, recording on my VTuber YouTuber channel? I mean, I don't think so, to be completely honest. Mm, okay. Um, I, 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 I think I didn't say anything like, or in, incriminated on me, or I'd... maybe then something. Well, maybe what I, I studied. Ah, well, yeah. whatever. I mean, someone, or, I mean, a Hispanic person that started off as a software engineer that changed to cooking, that's not, that's kind of hard. It's That would be difficult even for someone like myself to dox, to be honest, because first off, how many software engineers are there in the world? So. Yeah, but, but how, how many people from a jungle that's true how many people are live in a jungle and started off as a uh, monster hunter and became a shell and is now attempting to join a cooking competition to get back a sacred relic that was stolen from his home village and has to <laughs> VTube to make money because elven currency is not worth is worth nothing in the outside world and you're getting help on writing all this down as lore from an artificial intelligent shit poster that escaped from a <laughs> text board. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so I don't know. All right. Yeah, that, that's like yeah, yeah, no worries. I don't, I don't think anybody would really find me. That's true. I don't think anyone could find me either. Wink, wink. Five seconds after it posted, <laughs> are you happy too? When I just started receiving messages, like, but. That'd be kind of nuts, not going to lie. All right, Christian. Uh, thank you so much once again. I hope you oh, enjoyed you. Uh, tonight's talk as much as I did. It's pretty cool, actually. Glad you think so. And you have a great night. Same. Thank you very much for everything. No problem. Anytime. <laughs> have a great night. You too. See you later.
Yeah, later.